What is going on guys? Welcome to your 35th C++ tutorial and in this tutorial definitely don't want to miss this one because I'm going to teach you guys how to pass arrays into functions and there are a lot of weird tricks that you need to watch out for so make sure that you pay attention to every single detail. So let's go ahead and make a really simple function. Um, I'm going to make it really easy. The only thing it's going to do is print out an array, you know, one by one. So if our array was like 43, 21, 8, it would print out 43, 21, 8. Really simple, but, you know, it's a nice clear example. So let's go ahead and make sure you're working outside your main function right here. And call it anything you want. I'm just calling mine print array. And it's going to take some parameters. The first parameter that's going to take is the array itself that we're going to pass it in. So let's go ahead and say we're passing it in an integer array. Go ahead and write int and then give your array a name, the array. And whenever you pass an array into a function, you need to write those square brackets right after it. If you don't write those square brackets, it's going to think that you're going to try pass in a variable. And we want to tell our compiler no, our first parameter whenever we use this function is going to be an array, hence the square brackets. So what people typically do whenever they pass an array into a function, they usually want to pass in the size of the array too because, you know, that's information that you definitely need to know later on. So just go ahead and name the size of array, and this is of course going to be how many elements are in the array. So now, like I said, this is the easy part. Let's just go ahead and build a function that prints out, um, you know, each element in the array. So for int x equals 0, because remember, we always want to start at 0, so that's never going to change. The only thing that's going to change is this second thing we need to pass in. x is less than size of array. So check it out. We can go ahead and write, you know, later on when we create our array, instead of using size of array x is less than 10 or x is less than 20 but now whenever we use this function we can pass in any array in any size we want and it's going to work perfectly so instead of setting this equal to a number like 10, 15, 5 I like to set it equal to a variable because then it's a lot easier later on and of course x plus plus incremented by 1 so now whenever we pass in an array it's going to loop through each of its elements the 0 to the last element so now let's just go ahead and print it out on the screen the array and of course for here we plug in x and n line so now once I fix this right here what we built is a function that bit basically takes two parameters an array and the size of the array we needed this information because whenever we created our loop we needed to know how long to make that loop last and of course for each line all we did is we print out whatever element whatever value that element is equal to so now let's go ahead and prototype this function right now because remember we're going to be using the function right here in the main but whenever it tries to use this function it's not going to know that it's a function that we built unless we prototype it so let's go ahead and copy this and if you remember from like I don't know the 10th tutorial or something around then if we prototype it now we don't get an error message whenever we try to use this function because it knows that it's a function that we created. So let's just go ahead and make two arrays to work with int Bucky and we'll set this equal to a three integer array. And go ahead and add any three integers you want. Um, 20, 54, and 675 sound good to me. And actually let's go ahead and make another array just to make sure our program is working fine. I like to name my arrays names and I'm going to name this one Jessica and she's going to hold six integers so set this equal to get that out of the way and 54 um, why do I use 54 all the time 24 7 8 and 9 and oh, how many is that 5 and another one 99 good to go so now we have two arrays Bucky which has three integers and Jessica which has six integers so whenever we want to use this function that we just created just go ahead and type the name of your function print array and give it the two pieces of information it needs but you know how at the beginning of this tutorial I said that there are a couple of tricky things that you guys need to watch out for this is one of them you might think in the first parameter you might type Bucky or Bucky square brackets or Bucky square brackets 3 but actually the only thing you type is the name of that array so of course you well 
how can I explain this? You already created an array called Bucky, so now whenever you pass it in, it knows it's an array. You don't have to tell it that you're passing in an array because obviously if it created it already, it's going to know. So that's why whenever you pass it into a function, you don't use those square brackets at all. And of course, the second piece of information it needs is how big is this array? So let's go ahead and make sure 3 and pass in 3 for here. So now let's go ahead and build and run this program and check it out. 20, 20, 54, 54, 675, 675. And now let's go ahead and use this for Jessica. Jessica array, again, with no square brackets, and 6. So let's go ahead and build and run this. And it looks good to go 54, 24, 7, 8, 9, 99. Pretty good. So one last time, here's what we did. In the very first line of code, we built the function prototype because if we didn't have that prototype, let me just go ahead and comment this out, and we try to run it, we're going to get an error message. So this error message pretty much means this. All right, I did this, I did this, and now you want me to do this? What the heck is print array? So when we do include that prototype and try to run it, it knows that, oh, print array is actually a function that you guys built. All right, so now I'm going to run this, and I know to look for a function. So anyways, that's what prototyping did. Um, in the main, we just made two arrays. And in this line, we just called that function and passed in the array name and the size of the array. So then, whenever we called Jessica 6, it went down here to print array. For this parameter, it was Jessica, and for this parameter, it was 6. And then it looped through, it pr pretty much looped through a loop 6 times, and it said, all right. For the array, which was Jessica, print out each index of that array 0 to 5 and that would give you your six elements so this is basically how you use an array in a function and the only couple things you need to watch out for is this don't forget to prototype your functions don't forget whenever you are making your function itself to include the square brackets but whenever you use the function in your main program do not include those square brackets because your compiler is smart enough to realize that whenever you use Jessica, it obviously is an array because you told it right above it. So as long as you remember those simple things, you will be good to go and that is how you use an array inside a function. So it's kind of complicated at first, but if you just do it like two times, you'll be a pro at it. So that's all I have for you guys for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching and uh, don't know what I'm going to be talking about in the next tutorial, but it's going to be cool. So uh, I'll see you then.